Police made their voices heard at the first hashtag MeToo Time's Up March. And see what Firestone Walker has been brewing up recently. Plus, we'll tell you about a new location for a coffee shop favorite right here in San Luis Obispo. Broadcasting from Swanson Studios, you're watching Mustang News. Good afternoon and welcome to Mustang News. Today is Thursday, March 5th. I'm Nicholas Gonzalez. And I'm Austin Olympicum. Here are the top stories for this week. Cal Poly students are hoping to build on the nationwide conversation about sexual harassment and sexual assault. Last night, students mobilized in a packed Phillips Hall at the first ever Me Too Time's Up Town Hall. Organizers say they are fed up with the way Cal Poly is handling sexual assault and sexual harassment, and victims are demanding concrete steps to address the issues. Demands include a legal fund for survivors, increased campus escort services, and the removal of all sexual assault perpetrators from university housing and the university altogether. This all stems from the fact that Cal Poly has received 140 complaints in the last two years about Title IX misconduct, but only investigated 44. And while President Armstrong did not attend, a university spokesperson said the administration will continue engaging with the campus community on this issue until sexual misconduct is no longer an issue on campus. The brewing company best known for 805 Blonde and Union Jack IPA has some new things to sip on. R reporter Lauren Plume has the details. Matt Reynoldson started working in the brewing world by the time he could legally start drinking. He started as a hop chemist, utilizing his organic chemistry degree, but moved up in the field and has been the brewmaster at Firestone Walker since 2001. Things have evolved at Firestone since then. You can go way back, and when the company started in 1996, the craft brewing landscape was very different. Firestone has three new beers in the lineup for this year and has said goodbye to a longtime staple, the Pale 31 Ale. Firestone Lager. Um, that is brewed in the Munich Helles uh, Lager tradition, which basically, if you were to go to Germany and sit in a pub and just order a beer, you would likely be brought a half liter of Helles. The Firestone Lager is light in color, is an easy drinking beer, has 17 IBU, and uses German hops and malts. We also released a nitrogenated beer this year. The Nitro Merlin Milk Stout has a creamy head, uses lactose sugar, has creamy mouthfeel, and a cascade effect when poured. Firestone will soon be releasing their Coconut Parabola beer, which is aged in spirits barrels and utilizes coconut that was toasted over a Santa Maria-style grill. The final product is amazing, but the process of getting there is even better. Oh, I love it all, man. I just love the fact that I get to wake up in the morning, strap on some like steel toe shoes, and get paid to walk around and smell this smell, and to participate with the rest of our team in making the beer. And there's a mailbox uh, with a check in it at the end of the whole thing, which is pretty amazing, and a, an awesome beer to drink. So uh, I couldn't be happier working in the beer business. <laughs> Lauren Plume, Mustang News. As the winter winds down and students prepare for finals, a local coffee house favorite has opened up a second location for coffee lovers to study. The new nautical bean is located on Lower Hygeria and High Street and is entering its third week of operation, providing a new location for the lifeblood of most college students. The new location is dramatically larger and boasts a large study room. The walls are adorned with um, the art of the original location on LOVR, um, is known for. Mustang News, or former Mustang Misty King, told us what makes the nautical bean special. What do I not love about nautical bean? It's actually my favorite local spot. I just feel like the staff are super friendly. The atmosphere is always really cool. I love looking at all their different artwork that they have on display. Um, their nutty bean is second to no other roast in town, so that's my go-to for sure. The new location is open daily from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. for now. Um, according to um, the owner, Brett Jones, but that will change, and not only does the location offer its fame coffee and teas, but also the fresh-made food like Mom's Eggs of the Eagle take on a breakfast bagel. <laughs> there is even an old-style video game system for those study breaks. After the break, we'll have your weekend weather update. I think art is something that doesn't go appreciated that much, especially at a polytechnic campus. We have a lot of engineering and architecture focus, and we want to try to focus a lot of um, our arts writing on structural design and architecture design and things that relate to Cal Poly, but through the arts. I think good journalism comes from unbiased reporting, and I think we do a really good job at making sure that everything's accurate. It 
Well, sports is mostly good news, and a lot of the time, a lot of the other news we get isn't necessarily good news. And so I think that it's kind of a nice break from a lot of the other not so great things that might be happening around the community and on campus. I think that good journalism is objective and informative. It, it is as unbiased as possible. And I think that Mustang News does a really good job of that, reporting about the incidents on campus without necessarily putting a spin on them. Hello, it's me again, here to give you your weekly weather forecast. Starting off today in San Luis Obispo, we'll have a high of 71 and a low of 50. It will be kind of partly cloudy, but only with light winds at around two miles per hour. So let's check the five day forecast. Here, starting off Tuesday, it's a high of 72, low of 50. Friday is a high of 70, low of 51. Saturday is a 100% chance of rain, so expect that with a high of 61 and a low of 54. And Sunday we'll have some AM showers, but then be partly cloudy for the rest of the day. So high of 70 and low of 52. Monday is just a little bit cloudy, 69 and a low of 59, 49, I'm sorry. On to North County, our temperatures are mostly uniform here with around uh, a high of 73 in Paso Robles to a low, uh, to a high of 71 in Creston and then lows ranging in the high 40s to low 50s. Over on to South County, over on to South County Extended, we have highs of around 70 and then lows of around 50 for all of the, over all of the areas here. And then onto the beaches, you might want to grab a bowl because it's going to be a little chilly. Okay, so we have a high of around 72 here for most of the areas here and then uh, uh, for lows we'll have around 50s. And that is all for your weekend weather update. Over on to Sawyer with your sports. Hello, I'm Sawyer Mal. I'm here with your Mustang News Sports. The Cal Poly men's basketball team clinched a spot in the Big West Conference Tournament as the opening round tits off tonight. I caught up with the, with the team at, to get their expectations for their game. The basketball team finished conference play in seventh place and will take on UC Santa Barbara in the Big West Conference Tournament. Very confident. I think we have a good game plan. I think we have the right team to do it. Um, I think we're going to go there, we're going to fight and compete and just give it our best. I'm, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Like, it's definitely intense and very competitive and now the stakes are even higher. It's like it's, you lose, you're out. So, I mean, it's, everything is on the line and I feel like my team, we're prepared and we're ready to compete. This will be the fifth straight year that Cal Poly has been the seventh seed in the tournament and they hope to pull off another upset. It could be my last game, so playing each one of these games that we have like it's my last because it very well could be. Every place that I've left, we've in like junior college, high school, we've always ended on a good note, and I definitely want to do that here at Cal Poly and do something special. Um, I definitely feel like I have a more experience. You know, I'm, I played in the Honda Center before now, and not much new things to expect. So, I mean, I'm gonna play just how I play every other game. I'm gonna give it my all. Um, look for my teammates, score when I can, rebound, do do whatever I gotta do for my team to win. Anything can happen in this Big West tournament. And like you've seen in this whole season, like it's been a fight every night. It hasn't been too many blowouts or everything. It's, everything's been close competition. So definitely gives us a lot of confidence in what we could do. And let's check out what Daniel Sanchez attempted for his final Daniel Does Your Sport of the quarter. Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Daniel Does Your Sport. I'm Daniel Sanchez here at the Cal Poly Women's Dance Team practice, getting ready to take on the top six dancers on the team going to the Big West Tournament. Let's start dancing. <laughs>
CPDT banging. And for this week's Daniel Dodger Sport, I'm going to call that a win, you know. Started off really slow. Thought I was going to for sure get in the L column, but pulled together and thought the final product wasn't too bad. You know, I might be able to find myself a spot on the Cal Poly dance team. That's the final Daniel Does Your Sport for this quarter. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Daniel Sanchez from Mustang News. See you next quarter. Sports this week. We'll be right back after the break. The thing about broadcast is it's not just on paper, so now you're actually seeing people's emotions and their reactions. And I think you just really learn a lot by being able to go face to face and also have a camera and capture those emotions. And broadcast is so fun in my opinion because you, what you, you can take what you see and show it to your audience and show them exactly what you're witnessing or other people are witnessing at the moment. get the news first so that Cal Poly students are aware like there have so far to start off the beginning of the year there have been things such as like parking and bus routes and students have so many questions about that and so that kind of goes to what I want to do for this year and as I want to get that information out to students good journalism means that we are getting the story out but that it includes all the information that it answers all the questions that people are asking Tuesday evening, a screen of Latinos Beyond Real was held and followed by a panel discussion about challenging media stereotypes at the Science Building. Our very own Cal Poly graduate Armando Torres Garcia, now a digital journalist for ABC News, participated in the panel discussion to help inspire students and share his personal journey. Armando is a journalist who is undocumented himself. Julie Lehman, journalism lecturer, help to lead the discussion about media stereotypes and how students can overcome them. That the solution is right here, right? Uh, these are bright minds right here uh, that can uh, be allies to Latinos, that can um, question society, that can question the institutions that are propelling the stereotypes uh, that we know are not true. It's delving deeply into the archives, assessing what good information and bad information is, and being informed. The event was sponsored by the Cal Poly Journalism Department and the College of Liberal Arts. With school shootings in the national conversation, could arming profes professors be the solution to keeping our campus safe? Nicholas Gonzalez has the story. Questions about security and preparedness are being raised at Cal Poly following recent shootings around the country, as well as the Poly Alert that went out two weeks ago. While UPD practices for these situations, there's another proposed solution that's getting lots of attention arming the teachers and staff with concealed weapons. Uh, school shootings are relatively unknown until they happen, uh, but with teachers being armed and undergoing the right training, uh, they could stop the situation before it gets far worse than how it usually gets. I do not think that professors should be able to carry concealed weapons due to the fact that they are trained to be professors and not policemen. While some students might be in favor of this solution, one Cal Poly professor, Scott England, is more skeptical. Uh, I would be less inclined to think that someone that doesn't have to carry a gun every time they go to work um, would be able to, in an instant, be able to decide whether or not something is a fair and effective use of lethal force. Before coming to Cal Poly to teach students in political science, England worked for the FBI, the Defense Department, and served four tours in Iraq. My training that I received through the government is that when you draw your firearm, uh, you have made the decision that you're going to shoot. And that when you point the firearm at something, you've made the decision that you're going to kill or destroy whatever it is that you're pointing it at. And those are really tough questions to answer. Nicholas Gonzalez, Mustang News. That's all the news we have for you today. I'm Nicholas Gonzalez. And I'm Oslin Pacum. Have a great weekend.